What is up, beautiful people? It's your girl, Nicole Young, and I am back with another video coming to you straight from my patio because I have been loving working outdoors and just thought, why not shoot my videos out here too? So today we are talking about creating a plan. And this has been definitely the number one thing I've done to help me overcome a lot of the obstacles that I faced as a self-talk coder. It helped me with motivation, it helped me with seeing more progress, it helped me make sure that I was preparing myself adequately for what I eventually want to do professionally. So I definitely think that if you are someone who is trying to take the self-taught path and you want to take it seriously, then this is the video you need to be watching. So we have been in the self-taught coding problem series and so far we have talked about how to find your direction. If you haven't already watched the video, make sure you go and check it out before diving into this one because you definitely have to have a good idea of where you want to take your coding journey um, and wait, where you want your coding journey to take you before you dive into making a plan and setting goals for yourself. So go check that out. So when you think about creating a plan, I think about it in the same way a teacher or professor would build a syllabus out for you. A syllabus outlines a number of things so that you have the proper expectations going into the class of what is expected from you and also what you should expect to get out of it. So I decided to make my own syllabus, if you will, for my learning process and it is the best thing that I could have done. So now I'm going to outline what the elements are that I added to my personal plan for learning how to code and I'm also going to walk you step by step to making your own. So if creating your own plan for teaching yourself how to code is something that you feel like is interesting to you or that will be helpful for you, go ahead and hit the like button and stay with me to the end because I'm going to break down the entire process step by step so you don't want to miss it. First, let's get into why it's important to create a plan like this. So when you think about it, it honestly makes so much sense to make yourself a plan. The other alternatives to learning how to code are things like school or boot camps or online courses and classes. And every single one of those has a syllabus or a plan set up for what you're going to get out of the course and how you're going to take incremental steps to reaching the goal of completing it. So why wouldn't you do that for yourself, right? So now let's go over a few things that you should do to prepare for creating your plan. So the first thing that you need to do is set proper goals. The goals that you set should be very specific, they should be time-based, give yourself a deadline on those goals, and I would also say make them realistic. Don't try to set goals that are so high that it would be hard to keep motivation to see them through. Find ones that fit into the lifestyle that you have, especially when you're teaching yourself how to code. You have to account for your environment and your uh, living situation and your other responsibilities a lot more than you may have to do when you are learning in a controlled environment. The next thing that you should do is to figure out what resources that you are going to rely on during the process. So I personally suggest having an arsenal of resources at your disposal at any given point in time. So the first thing that I would suggest is finding a good book, a book that is like a complete guide or something of the sort that is meant for beginners to walk you from the very beginning to a very solid endpoint of knowing like the full scope of that language or that job that you are trying to reach right so the second thing that you should do is find a course or two one thing i love about courses that i feel like makes them really useful in a way that a book can't be is that a lot of times your instructor is explaining these concepts to you in a way that helps you to understand why they will be useful for you when you eventually become 
uh, what your goal is. The next thing I do from there is find resources that will allow me to practice what it is that I am learning. So it's great to learn all of the theory and understand the concepts and be able to know what those things are used for, but understanding what to do and actually being able to do it, two completely different things. And you have to be exercising the skill as you learn it in order for that material to solidify itself in your head and also just to be able to ensure that you are preparing yourself properly for what you want to do in the long run. So websites like HackerRank are great for just picking up different challenges or projects that you can do. I also really like, um, as for front-end development, I really like just finding websites that I really like and trying to build them myself from scratch. And that's really cool because then you can go and use developer tools or something to look at the source code and then figure it out from there. Um, or just compare what you did to what they did and that's a great way to learn as well and the third thing that i would suggest you doing is to set some rules and parameters for yourself throughout the time span that you are setting to reach your goal i believe that this one is the most important thing that i did for myself and the one that really changed the game for me and that's because the rules that i set for myself really helped me to build a habit. So next we're going to actually build a plan. Once you have the goals, you have deadlines for those goals, you have a list of resources that you're going to rely on, and you have a set of parameters that you're going to operate within, that's all you need. And now we just have to fill in the actual plan. So I use Notion to create my plans. Notion is really great, but you definitely can use any other method of like a spreadsheet or a Word document or something like that to build your plan. It does not have to be this crazy and specific, but I'm going to walk you through what I did on Notion and then you can figure out how you wanna build yours from there. So this is my Notion plan that I made for my front end development. So my goal was to learn front end in 100 days. So here is like just some basic parameters I set, the days I was going to work and the number of hours each day, the ideal time span that I would work within and the dates. And here are some intentions that I built for myself. Um, here are some rules that I set up for myself so that every time that I came up to this page, I had those rules in mind of like, coding is a priority, I need to stay consistent with it, I have to value progress over perfection because it's really important to keep that in mind, um, and not to break the chain. And what I mean by that is that I set a rule for myself that I wasn't allowed to miss more than one day in a row. And that helps me to never get into a bad habit of falling off of my coding and then keep building, that's my thing. So here are some resources that I was using. So what I did there was these resources are um, my HTML and CSS resources, my JavaScript resources, and these are two uh, courses that I was working on. And then here is the spreadsheet plan that I had. So because I was doing 100 days, I just decided to break mine down week by week. So each week, I filled out what week, what date it was, I filled in some topics that I knew I wanted to learn that week, and here are the resources that I used. Um, so these are the two courses and then some objectives. Okay, so I just wanted to review the first week, review HTML and CSS, review Git, and get some general basics of design and responsive development. So I did that, and here are some courses that I took. And then also what I did, and this is another reason why I love Notion, is that each record in a table can also be opened up into a page. So here's the page of that first line. I added a journal. So every day I filled in the start time and end time that I was learning and also filled out just a short paragraph of what I went over, 
what course I went to, and then also like some general, like how I felt that day and things like that. So I did that on each one. As you'll see here, also set some goals. So it was really great to do that. And then down here, I had some projects. These are just projects that I plan on building um, and have been working on for friends and family. Um, and it's just a way that I can build to practice what I'm learning, but also to get some things into my resume. So if you want to build something like this, it's really easy to do. You just want to make um, a Notion account. And right now, Notion is actually free. They just switched it so that the personal plan is absolutely free. And that's awesome because I, I actually paid for mine. You would go down here, start a new page, and then you can see here it says templates. You click there. In education, so you see there's like this drop down menu. In education, there is a template called syllabus, and you can start that new. Thing. And as you can see, the setup is very similar to the one that I just showed you. And all I did was switch out like the, the different topics and tags and added information that I needed. This is what I've been doing and I promise you that if you create a plan and you stick to it, that it's going to make it a lot easier to stay consistent and motivated and to work through those difficult times that you're going to ultimately reach. If you're going to make the switch to using a plan like this one, leave a comment below and let me know how it is, how it goes when you're done. Feel free to tag me on your plan on social media or share it in the Facebook group if you're in there because I think it's so awesome to share what you're doing in order to keep that accountability up and to get feedback or give feedback to me.